Okay, this is the new zones chart. It is replacing the old zones chart. This one is pretty much fully fleshed out as usual. If you can find something that I missed, please let me know, but I think I got it all. This is a chart that is divided into the way that men categorize women and the way that women categorize men. Men have one set of values. Men add up what we think about your looks, your personality, we subtract how much availability you're giving to other men, and then here I drew a cabinet, which is the male version of the galaxy, because there are other things that can make women more and less valuable to men, but it's not very much. These many, many things can make a big difference, a big impact on how women like men, but over here it's not that big of an impact. So this is basically the way that men decide how much they value you. And then once we decide from the best I can get to the worst I'll take where we're going to put you, you kind of end up in one of these boxes and it can be pretty hard to leave. In order to do that, you would have to either improve your looks or your personality or get rid of the male attention that you have in your life. And you're not going to really be able to do it with this. If, if this isn't cutting it for us, this is a big lesson that a lot of women need to learn. You can't overcome lack in this department by wearing a t-shirt that he likes or picking up a hobby that he likes. That's why it's a cabinet. It's very, very small. It makes a small impact. If your cabinet is perfect for the man that you want, it might give you half a point to a point. This is really most of it. Women, on the other hand, they have two sets of criteria that they evaluate men on. They have good guy stuff and bad boy stuff. And this is one of the reasons that there's so much confusion in our culture about what women want, because they say they want good guy things, and then they actually go with men who have bad boy things. But the truth is they want both, and you don't have to choose. In our language, we say, I'm a good guy, or I'm a bad boy, or I'm good, or I'm bad, or this is... But really, you can be both of these things. And in order to be both of these things, you have to maximize your physical attractiveness, face, body, height, voice, all the things that you can do, lose weight, get muscle, maximize it, and maximize your masculinity. Dominance, power, confidence, smoothness, which is... I'll explain that later. Smoothness is basically how well you understand women. If you can approach a woman and you know what it is that she responds to, she's going to go, oh, you understand women. That's your smooth. That requires some more unpacking. And women also respond to dark triad traits. This is a big difference between men and women. Men do not need women to have any evil stuff, any bad boy stuff. We don't need bad girls. Some guys like bad girls, but that's a personality thing. They, men in general don't need girls to be bad. Women need men to be at least somewhat bad. You got to be dangerous. You have to have the ability to be dangerous, not necessarily go to jail, but you have to be capable of it. And that will boost your bad boy score which is what you really want. You would It's better to be all bad and no good than it is to be all good and no bad because then you end up in the friend zone. So both of these speech and thought bubbles are arranged the same way. The higher up you go, the more it is based in love, which is supportive, public, monogamous, and emotional. And the farther down you go, the less love there's going to be and the more lust, which is going to be opportunistic, secret, multiple partners at many times, and impulsive. So, of course, a man is going to have lust for a keeper. Of course he is, because that means that he likes the way she looks. But he's going to have a lot of love for her. Way down here, he's going to have no love at all, and it's going to be entirely a lust-based relationship. Sleepers in the middle, where we have what women call situationships, that's where there's some level of emotional connection, but it's not really enough to be the one and only. You're kind of in a middle zone, and and the, the man will say things like, I don't know where I'm going to be in three weeks, you know, like, I don't, I don't know what my life is. Yes, we do. We do know what our life is. We do know where we're going to be. We just kind of want to wait for someone who we're definitely going to put in here. You got to stop listening to these things. So for women, avoiding getting into these bad relationships is a lot easier than it is for men to avoid getting in these bad, bad relationships. You just have to know how he feels about your looks, your personality, and your exposure to other men and the stuff you have in common. 
figure out how much he likes you and judge it by how much investment he's giving you. How much of his time and energy and money and whatever it is that you value, because every woman values different kinds of investment. But if you value something and he's not giving it to you, because this is the higher you go, the more investment, the lower you go, the less investment. If he's not giving you the investment that you want, that's a very clear signal that you're not here. And you either have to change something to get here or you have to leave and find another guy who likes you. So just really quick for men, Keepers is obviously my one and only. This is the one woman that we care about the most. Sleepers is these are girls who we like and we're attracted to them. And as you can see, this is the public private line. There are some times that sleeper relationships enter into the public arena and will go out with you but we still aren't really committed and we kind of waffle a little. And then there are some times where sleeper relationships are like, let's just keep this between us. Just come over at midnight, right? Once you get down into sweepers, this is usually just mistakes. We usually wish we hadn't done this. It might be related to alcohol or maybe it's been a really long time, but if there's any ever any kind of contact here, it's called sweepers as in under the rug, because we don't want anyone to know about it. So if a guy has ever had any level of a relationship with you and tried to hide you and not answer the phone and disappeared and everything, that's where you were. And you need to not be there because it's pretty uncomfortable. So for women, it's obviously a lot more complicated because women have two sets of criteria that they judge men on. One of them is good guy stuff and one of them is bad boy stuff. Good guy stuff, the level of good guy things that you have, which is, of course, how much you're investing in her. Is it enough for her? Are you presentable? Does that make you look good? That's, um, for women, looks is broken down into presentable and face and body and height and voice. So there's, men have that both in one thing, but women have looks separate. So if you're a really, you know, physically unattractive guy, but you're very well put together and you're giving a woman a lot of investment, then you would have a really high good guy score and a very low bad boy score, and you would end up in the friend zone. So the amount that a woman thinks you are a good guy is going to be the amount of investment that you're giving her compared to what she wants, the amount that you make her look good when you're seen together in public, because that's going to push you above the public line. And then this is important. Men sub subtract other men from their valuation of women, and women subtract other women from their valuation of men in the good guy zone. But women will very often keep going back to a bad boy that has a lot of girls, or a situationship with a guy who has a lot of girls. They, women generally do not subtract other women from the bad boy score. They take other women from the good guy score because that's going to take away your investment in her. And over here, having other women does not take away your investment in her because it's all based in excitement and, and physical things. And then finally, uh, of course, women have the galaxy. And that's many, many, many little things that each individual woman values separately, which is the male version is the cabinet. In here, a woman might have like being good with kids or liking pets or having the same hobbies in common or wearing a particular kind of shirt. There's lots and lots of little details in here that don't quite fit into anything else. It's just what fits with her life, what matches with her experience and with her feelings, and it's difficult to really predict what that's going to be. It's very individual for everybody, and this is very individual for everybody too, but this only matters a little bit, and this, if you have what a woman wants in here, it can give you a few points. Like if you're not particularly presentable, but you're okay, and you don't have a lot to invest, but you're okay, and you have a load of things in common with her, it can boost you up a few points on the good guy score. Again, not the bad boy score. So all of those things in the good guy score, they measure how much the woman trusts you to be able to be there for her and make her look good and have a, a very public relationship, very public. The more you are a good guy, the safer that she will feel going out with you and being seen with you in the friend zone, husband zone, or the prince charming zone. But again, if you have only good guy traits, she's not going to like you enough for any of these zones you have to have some bad boy traits. And it could be just looking good. That's enough for some women. It can be 
there are some guys who don't look that good, but they're very, very smooth again, and they have experience with women, and women like it when they know you have experience with women. If you are very dominant, if you're good at something like a sport, if you're the head of your social group, if you're the boss at a job, like if she works somewhere and her boss is very, very dominant over other people, that's going to sort of trigger something in there. It triggers something in the, in the bad boy continuum. Uh, men who are very confident in themselves. Dark triad traits also appears here. Dark triad traits are linked to power. And one of the ways that power is most easily accrued for men is by being kind of brutal to other people and using them and tricking them. And it can get pretty dark. That's why it's called that. But it does result in men getting more power and more money and more status and all of those things are attractive to women. Again, different women value different things differently. And you can have no looks at all, but very high masculinity. And women will like you like this. That they're, Women are very different from men in that way. If a woman is really unattractive, but has a great personality, we generally will not say, well, her personality is worth enough to get up here. You, you have to have at least a bare minimum of looks for men. But for women, I want you to Google Henry Kissinger. He is not an attractive man, but he was sleeping with supermodels because he was very, very powerful on a global scale. Masculinity is very attractive to women. So you can have a maximum bad boy score if you have super high masculinity, if you have super high power and no looks. It's different. So the way that a woman feels about your two scores, she's going to evaluate what are your good guy traits and what are your bad boy traits, and she's going to evaluate how she feels about you. That creates, I split it up into nine zones, and I just used terms that are familiar in our culture to make it easier for people to understand. We'll start with nothing. If you have no bad boy traits at all and no good guy traits, you're a ghost. Women don't even recognize you. You're just a thing. You're, you're, if you're the mailman, you're just the thing that makes the mail come. Unless you're very attractive and then you would jump up to here. Uh, let's start by going up the good guy scale. If you are less than half good, if you're, if you're below this public line, and you have no bad boy traits at all and you're less than half good and you're pursuing a woman, she's going to say, Ew, you're a creep. You don't have, you're not attractive to me at all, and you're not very good. So I don't want to be around you. If you go a little bit above half, women will have a gold digger relationship with men in this area if they have a lot of money. If they don't have a lot of money, it's kind of like ick. It's kind of just, okay, this guy's pretty nice, but I don't feel anything for him. And so it's just kind of, gross and leave me alone. It's similar to creep, but a creep is like someone who you would not want to talk to at all. Someone who you would want gone from your life, but you'd be aware of him. You would not be aware of the ghost. Ick would be something like, well, I, he has to be around and I have to tolerate him, but I don't really want to think about, you know, starting a relationship with this guy unless he has tons of money. And then some women will put up with it again. Some women, again, everyone is different. If you max out your good guy score and you have no bad boy points at all, you're going to be in the friend zone. Women will go out in public with you. They will let you buy them things. That that If you're very, very good to her and you're treating her with investment and you're making her look good and you don't have other women. I, I had a video recently with a girl talking about having a guy in the friend zone and he got a girlfriend and so she lost her investment. And she said, well, that makes me feel bad. But then again, it wasn't a relationship, so I can't say anything. She was just talking about losing free investment from a guy who she didn't like at all. So this is not somewhere you want to be. And this is something that a lot of men have trouble with. They, they, they be as nice as they can be. And they go, why don't women want me? And it's because women are not attracted to this. It's what makes them feel safe and comfortable, and it's what makes them want to spend time around you. It's what makes them trust you. It what ma it's what makes them want to be seen with you or build a future with you, but it's not what makes them attracted to you. This confuses men, because when women give us what we value, they shoot right up this chart. And we wonder why that doesn't work for us. And the reason is that you either are not good looking, and you, I mean... God forbid that you're, you have unfixable things about you, 
but hopefully you can lose some weight and gain some muscle and start dressing better and become more masculine. If there are things that you cannot fix about your body, you have to at least be more manly. And then that's going to give you some degree of points. So if you are maximum nice and you become more manly by working on yourself, take care of your face and your body and and become more of a man, you might move into the husband zone. If you do a fantastic job, you could move into the Prince Charming zone, but this is very, 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 very rare. So we did the first column, let's do the second column. If you are a medium bad boy, if you're medium bad, if you're medium attractive or medium masculine, kind of manly, but not really, and you have no good guy things at all, sometimes you will be women's drunken mistake. This is kind of like the female sweeper. She might make a mistake and, and she'll feel like, well, you, I, you aren't really a bad boy. You don't really do it for me. I, we shouldn't have done this. I thought that you were going to be more exciting, but you're really lukewarm and you're not nice at all. If you are medium bad and you're, again, under half good, this is a bad situationship. This range is situationships and this one is settling because at, at this point, this can become permanent in public, but in all three of these, this these are where the man will not commit, and this is where the woman will not commit. So they're all situationships, but different kinds. This one, again, the bad situationship is with a guy who's half attractive or half masculine, half what women, you know, get excited about, but not nice enough to settle for and not even close to nice enough to be in the husband zone not giving enough investment, not presentable enough, kind of dumpy, not doing great in life. Th that's a bad situationship where the woman will not turn the key. If you go above the half point of the good guy traits, then you get to the settling point. And at a certain point, women will settle. And I kind of, I picked colors for these things that I think represent the emotions. Settling is kind of dusty. It's like an old pillowcase that hasn't been washed in a while. It's just like, eh... It works, I guess. It's not very exciting, but it's often better than nothing. Uh, and then if you work really, really hard to bring all of these to her, if you have everything in common with her and you're supporting her really well and you make her look really good, you can be in the husband zone. And the way that women will think of you in the husband zone is, well, he's not that much of a man. He's not super attractive and he's not super manly, but man, does he ever take care of me? And that's my husband and I'm proud of him. So then let's do the last column. The last column has both of the kinds of relationships that women like the most. Women do like friend zone relationships, but they're not nearly as fun as bad boy relationships, not even close, and they're not as good as Prince Charming relationships, which are, again, very, very rare. The Prince Charming relationship is the ideal long term, and the bad boy relationship is the ideal short term, which is a really difficult thing about women. This is one of the most difficult things I've ever learned about women, that even if you manage to be Prince Charming, the bad boy is still more exciting because it is so bad and so short term. It's, it's paradoxical that being good can make her less excited for you. She'll be more excited for a bad boy than she will be for Prince Charming because there's something about stability that kind of dilutes this. And this is the most healthy kind of relationship when the, the man is here for the woman and the woman is here for the man. But the way that society is going lately and the way that it typically goes in human history, when a, a guy gets this valuable, he ends up having multiple women. And then they're all in a, a harem, which is a kind of situationship, which usually the women think is either a good or a mid level situationship. It's either one where they go out with a guy and they're seen with him and they, everyone knows he has multiple women, or it's just a quiet thing where they go over his place and that's all that they're, that they're going to get and that's all that he's willing to give. I have a story I always tell everyone about when I was driving for Uber and I met a girl who uh, figured out that I was good at this kind of stuff. She just picked it up really quick and she asked me, she said, hey, I'm seeing this guy and he has all these other girls and he won't commit to me, and, and I'm stuck here, basically, is what she was saying. And she said, how do I get him to pick me out of all the other women? And, you know, I looked in the rearview mirror, and I took a look at her, and I had listened to her talking to her friend for a minute, and I knew what kind of, you know, life she was living, roughly. 
And I pretty much assessed that, you know, there's not a lot that you can do here, especially if this is the only other guy you're seeing. And I asked her that. I said, is the only guy you're seeing? And she said, yeah, it was just the one guy, but he had four or five girls. She actually didn't know how many it was. And so I said to her, how well do you know this guy? And she said, pretty well. And I said, what do you think he would say if you told him you have to have only me and get rid of all your other girls or I'm leaving? Do you, do you think he would keep the four other girls or keep you? And she said she they, he would keep the four other girls. And I said, and let me ask you this. What if I gave you 100% of my love and devotion and, and I gave you all of the good guy stuff I had to give? Would you dump him for me? And she got really quiet. And I said, don't worry about it. You're not going to hurt my feelings. We're in an Uber. It doesn't matter. And she said, no, I would not do that. So she told me that 100% of what I could give her would have been in this range or this range, and what she was getting from this other guy was either here or here. She valued being in his harem more than having me all to herself, because in her evaluation, she likes men that have more than I do. And so this is a, a, a lesson that I'm really hoping that women can learn. I'm, I'm hoping that I can can get it through to some women that you can't, if, if you can't improve this, you can't improve this, you can't get rid of male attention, and you have maximized this, and he's putting you here, He's not, he doesn't like you this much, and he never will. If he's got five women, why would he get rid of four of them to keep one? He would get rid of one of them to keep four. You're just here. And if you want to be here... That's your choice. I can't make that. No one can make that choice for you. If this is what you prefer, this and that's what this girl said. She said she would rather be here with him than be probably here with me, at least in her evaluation. Maybe I, maybe I would have been able to do this for her. Maybe. But in her assessment, I was in this icky zone, this kind of, ugh, I don't really want that. I'd rather be with an exciting guy 20% of the time. So that's pretty much it. That's how the zones work, and that's how... Men value women and how we place you in here, and that's how women value men and how they place us in here. And a lot of the problems that we're having in the dating market are in the way that we're negotiating. It, women would rather have a part of a guy than a whole, you know, mid level guy. And men would rather have one or two or five women in this zone than pick one of them and have a one and only. It would probably make us happier if we had those kinds of relationships. But the way that we're negotiating lately, it, we're ending up here and here, and everyone's getting all hurt emotions over it. And of course, we're ending up here and here as well. So I, I can't make your decisions for you. I can't change what you value, but I can give you a map so that you know how to make your own choices. Um, that's pretty much it. That's the zones map. Let me know what you think. And report back if this is making any positive changes for you. I'd love to hear it. <laughs>